They say humanity once ruled the star system. They called all this the end of the world. <laughs> end of their world, maybe. These days we don't put a lot of stock in what the humans have to say. As for us, this is the only world we've ever known. The only world we've got. And if the humans don't want it, we're more than happy to take it off their hands. Welcome to the Long Night. In the distant future of XX250, humanity has fallen to its own hubris. Earth is a wasteland, covered in the remnants of a once great solar empire. Millennia of genetic and cybernetic experimentation has divided humanity into a menagerie of mutant species. Some intelligent, some feral. Humanity's strange creations now fight over Earth's remaining resources. They fight to survive. Among those wretched survivors are the Simeon Uplifts, huge apes granted intelligence and language by genetic alteration and invasive implants. They were created by the humans to show off the wonders of human science. With the fall of the Empire, they've been left to survive on their own. And so it happened that seven very gifted gorillas ended up packed into a souped-up eight-wheeler screaming across the desert on their way towards a new home. They'd heard word of a special place out west, where the water flows clean and trees still grow. Well, trees of a sort. They were headed towards a moss forest, one of the only green places left on this planet. Not that the Seven were especially keen on returning to the trees. Simian society doesn't much value nature, despite what you might expect. But if moss can grow there, so can food. At least it'll be better than trying to rough it in the wasteland. Hopefully. And indeed, after a few days' drive, the apes reach their destination. A new chapter of history begins here at this place, Moragamite. Good luck, you'll need it. Here we are. The eight-wheelers parked on a lush, mossy jungle ridge above a deep river canyon. The river flows over the cliffside in an impressive waterfall before splitting off at a fork. Fish fill the waters and edible mushrooms cover the ground. It's certainly unsettling living in a place with so much green around, but as far as food and water is concerned, the jungle seems like easy living. To the south, the terrain slopes down. Should make for a pretty defensible spot. This looks like as good a place to break ground as any. The apes start clearing out moss trees. Our circular saws quickly cut through the soft, mossy lumber. We also start tilling the soil. It's pretty muddy here, but the soil is fertile. We'll start by planting some moss fruits and potatoes to make sure we have enough food. Meanwhile, our minor apes are drilling out a bunker for us to take shelter in. There are thin layers of plastic refuse and deeper layers of corroded metal, but we end up digging out the bunker in a layer of dense piping. These pipes may have been used to pump water, fuel, or waste across the megacities of old earth. These days, it's just a bunch of buried scrap. It's fit to be recycled, though. We can use this junk to make a lot of useful materials. Speaking of which, we've also unearthed some rarer materials. Lodged in the ancient pipe network are some chunks of recycled alloy, and a few nuclear fuel rods. We'd uh, probably better be careful handling those. Back above ground, the local fauna has come to greet us. Up until now, we've only seen some harmless river creatures among the moss, like crabs and fish. But some rather more intimidating beasts are now coming to investigate the commotion. There are a few masses of nanite ooze slithering through the underbrush. A nanite ooze colony is a man-sized lump of nanomachines. It hardens its body in response to attack. A mouth of metal shards is at its front. I'm not sure how these things would fare against a bunch of cybernetically enhanced gorillas, but until we're a bit better armed, I'd rather not find out. They seem to be keeping their distance, at least. Though, it looks like one of the nanite colonies has gotten into a scrape with another creature out in the forest. 
a clacker. A clacker is a man-sized eyeless bird with a powerful beak that it uses to echolocate via clicking. It hunts in packs and can sprint as easily as it flies. There are some wild ones flying around, but it looks like the clacker that attacked the nanites is tame and belongs to us. We actually brought two of the birds with us when we arrived, though I'm not entirely sure what they're for. Egg production? Defense? In any case, our clacker was bitten all over by the nanites, and is in pretty rough shape. The nanites have moved away from the camp though, so I guess the clacker did a good enough job. And so, the apes work into the summer, carving out a home among rusted pipes and strange plants. Before too long, some migrants show up, and our population is brought up to 14 citizens. It's a motley band of apes, some with useful skills. We'll put the lot of them to work in a new workshop sector we've been building underground. Pretty soon we'll be able to start smelting down some of this excess piping and turning it into useful materials. More than anything, we need weapons and armor. This forest is full of resources, and we'll no doubt soon have to defend it from other jealous wastelanders. In fact, the apes are really itching for a fight. See, Simeon Uplift Society deeply respects skill at arms, and views war as a useful means to an end. In fact, pretty much all of our apes dream of becoming legendary warriors, even our expedition leader, Radiver Hoshtrupkhan. She's more indifferent about warfare than the rest of the colony, but she still deeply desires to prove herself in combat. With basically our whole population dreaming of battle, we'd best get started on a military early. We don't have any guns yet, but we do have one formidable weapon in our arsenal. One of the migrants brought with them a serrated edge wedge axe, made out of grade A nanotechni. Nanotechni is a valuable and useful form of metal, infused with nanomachines. It can be worked into nearly any shape, be it intricate machinery, razor-sharp blades, or high-powered firearms. It's even self-replicating under certain conditions. We don't quite have the industry to produce this stuff yet, but this axe will come in handy for now. We'll give it to our best fighter and put them in a solo squad, in case more monsters show up soon. We also, of course, have the eight-wheeler. Fifteen tons of fully autonomous, heavily armed steel, mounted with a repeater cannon and a pair of shard pods, designed for on- and off-road driving, and quite able to handle the mossy terrain of the forest. It's the pride and joy of the colony, and it ought to be a monster on the field if anything tries to attack us. Autumn rolls around as we begin our recycling operation. As we break down pipes, alloys, and fissile material, we recover a huge variety of metals. We've recovered lots of machinery, lead, aluminum, and depleted uranium, along with a few bars of other metals. We've also recovered many bars of energetic compound, a vital power source. But if we want to build some firearms, we'll also need a lot of nanotechni, and we haven't been able to find any of that underground. Luckily, the Autumn Caravan has arrived, ready to trade. Looks like they came in via chopper. Yes, they do have some nanotechni for sale. We're looking for Grade C nanotechni. Yes, they have an anvil made of this stuff for trade. We can smelt it down for our purposes. We'll also buy some textiles, maybe get some food. We don't have a lot to trade with, but we've built some mechanisms and mugs out of the pipework here, which will cover the cost. Side note, a pair of simian migrants join while the caravan is trading with us, bringing us up to 16 apes. We're growing relatively slowly, but that has given us time to prepare plenty of bedrooms for our citizens. We also haven't had any problems with food. The soil here is very fertile. We've been preparing lots of ration cubes out of mushrooms, moss fruits, soybeans, and cave lobster. It's nothing special, but we're just happy to have our bellies full. Water, of course, is plentiful since we have a well that pulls water all the way up from the river to the bottom of the cliff. Now, it's time to make some nanotechnique. The apes smelt down the anvil, and we are able to recover a single bar of pure Grade C nanotechni. That's all we need to start things off, because Grade C nanotechni is self-replicating. The nanites that inhabit the metal can consume certain other materials, creating more nanotechni. Combine a single bar with enough corroded metal, and you can create a limitless supply of Grade C nanotechni. The Grade C bars can then be refined into more durable forms of nanotechni. All we need to do now is mine out some of the corroded metal above the bunker, and we'll be up to our ears in grade C. Still, all this nanometallurgy requires fuel, and it will take some time for us to create enough charcoal to make a decent amount of the stuff. The apes work for months and months, stoking the nanosmelters and building defensive structures. 
A wall of pipework goes up around the entrance, extending two stories high. Firing positions are prepared atop the wall. We start producing good amounts of nanotechnique and forge our first firearm, a scoped rail rifle made of Class M nanotechnique, the first of many. By spring of 251, one year after the apes arrived here, the place is really starting to come together. A few more months and we'll have a totally self-sufficient, defensible fort. We still have a bit more work to do before we've reached that point, though. The wall's roof is incomplete, so we won't be able to safely shoot from up there yet. A bigger problem, though, is a lack of troops. We still only have 16 apes, only one of which is drafted, which is going to make protecting the outpost pretty difficult. We need a lot more migrants to prepare our formidable defense, or offense. Luckily, a group of apes is already on their way, looking to join the colony. Excellent, we can definitely make use of the manpower, though we'll need to scale up food production to sustain a larger population. And indeed, the population of Outpost Moragamite did grow that day, because this group of migrants was enormous. A staggering 26 new arrivals came to the settlement, bringing us to 40 apes. They must have caught word of our military ambitions too, because they brought combat drones, firearms, and another armed eight-wheeler with them. But they also brought something else. A weapon, enormous and ancient. Part machine, part organic. And armed to the teeth. But, it's getting late. Catch me later to hear more stories about the dark future, and find out what happens to the simian soldiers of Moragamite.